Welcome to Spirit of God Fellowship. We're so glad that you are here this morning on this February Sunday. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Oh, am I alone here or is it dreadful? <laughs> I'm feeling that song though. <clears throat> Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. God is in charge, isn't he? But that is easier said than done. I know a lot of us are going through a, a tough January, a tough February. I, I know that I am. I know that many of us are. So here's a question for you this morning as we begin. What keeps you up at night? What causes you to have insomnia? What are the things that you worry about at night that causes you to not get a good night's sleep? Have you ever said this? Dear sleep, I'm sorry I hated you when I was a younger child. <laughs> I want you back. When we were kids, we used to say, I don't want to go to bed. <clears throat> I don't want to take a nap. How many of you have some kids like that? But this morning, we're here saying, man, I, I just want to be able to fall asleep. And, and so we try all kinds of different ways to get to sleep. We, 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 we have CPAP machines. How many fellow CPAP machines? I, I, yeah, there's a bunch of us. I, I have one, just trying to get a good night's sleep. Um, we, we try uh, pink noise. We try uh, white noise. We try ocean noise, we try TV noise, we try for some separate bedrooms to get a good night's sleep. We try special teas, we try sleeping pills, we try drugs, we try alcohol. And when that fails, we just dig out our old special stuffed animal from the past and we try to sleep with that. Maybe that'll give us a good night's sleep. But listen, when all else fails, if you can't get a good night's sleep, what you need to do is you need to invite that award, that Oscar award winning actor, Jeff Bridges, into your bedroom. He will help you. Go ahead, Paul. Oh. There's our guy, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. I'm sorry, Joanne. What is going on? It's what? It's loose. Okay. Well, we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to use the hand. It's going to drive me crazy. Don't worry, right? Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> there you go. Jeff Bridges, right? But listen, this morning is not about how you sleep. This morning is about your relationship with God and how our relationship with Him is affected by the things that we worry about. It is. Our relationship with God is affected when we worry. The, the stats, the statistics on worry are, are off the charts. I'll, I'll give you a couple of them. Um, 40 million Americans between the age of 18 and 54, that's a big demographic in this room, have some kind of anxiety disorder. That's almost 20% of Americans. And then kids, This I just heard this on the news, one in six children ages 6 
to 17 have some kind of anxiety disorder. It's frightening. And, and, and there's times in most of our lives that anxiety keeps us up in the night, right? But church, friends, there is one who doesn't sleep, amen? There is one who never falls asleep, and he's not worried about this world, and he's not worried about you and your problems. He will help us. Aren't you glad that we have a God in heaven who is in charge? But worry gets to us. Here's a definition of worry. There's all kinds of them. I picked this one. Worry is a small trickle of fear that meanders through your mind until it cuts a channel into which all other thoughts are drained. That's what worry is. That's what worry does. Have you ever caught yourself saying this? I'm, I'm, boy, I'm a, I'm a little bit worried about that person. I'm a, I'm a little bit worried about that, that thing. And, and then all of a sudden, we're worrying a little bit longer. And then all of a sudden, just worried, it starts just a little bit. And then we are in this vortex of worry. And anxiety takes over. And we're deep in it. But Jesus gave this great sermon it's called the Sermon on the Mount. You can find it in Matthew 5 and 6 and 7. If you get a chance, read it. But this is probably one of the most important messages in the Bible. And he talks about a lot of things in that message. He, he talks about loving your enemies and how we aren't supposed to judge others. He talks about adultery and he talks about divorce and he talks about prayer. And then in the middle of that Sermon on the Mount, he talks about worry. And, and that's where we're at this morning. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Matthew 6. If you don't have a Bible, it's okay. No big deal. We're going we're gonna to show it up here on the screen. But if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 6. I'm going to read our text for us this morning. And then we're just going to hang out. In Matthew Matthew 6 verses 25 this is what Jesus says in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount about worry verse 25 that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing look at the birds they don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your Heavenly Father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today, and thrown into the fire tomorrow, we will certainly, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Well, they dominate the thoughts of all of us. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously. He will give you everything you need. Here we go. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble has enough for, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, today's trouble is enough for today, right? Great verse. What I want to do this morning is I want to take a look at some things that were mentioned in this, in this passage, things that we worry about in the night, things that we have anxiety about, and, and, and a big one is, is money and finances. Man, we worry about money. Money pulls us in all kinds of directions, doesn't it? Do I have enough money to pay my bills? Do I have enough money to, to raise my family? Do I have enough money to send my kids to college? Do I have enough money to retire? We, we, we think these things. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you have a lot of money or a little bit of money. As a matter of fact, some people that have a lot of money are obsessed with not having enough and they worry about money. We'll talk about not having enough in a bit. By the way, money is the number one cause for divorce. 
people worry about money. But, but here's what Jesus said about money. You don't have to turn there, but verse 19 in this Sermon of the Mount, Jesus said this, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, where thieves break in and steal, but store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. In other words, Jesus is saying, don't worry about your finances. He's saying, don't worry about money here. Don't get obsessed with it. Just, just make eternal investments. Just store them up in heaven. Because when we worry about the treasures here on earth, we're going to have a lot of anxiety. And then Jesus told this story, this parable about a sower sowing seeds. And he talks about throwing seeds on rocky soil and throwing seeds on thorny soil and all this stuff. I'm going to just deal with two of them real quick. Jesus said that this guy threw some seed on good soil. And the soil, the seeds in the good soil grew a hundredfold. Now the seeds are the, is the word of God. And I just, just want, it doesn't have anything to do with the message, but, but I want to say that, man, there's good soil here at Spirit of God Fellowship, isn't there? Man, I'm so blessed to be a part of this church. There's been a lot of seeds planted. I know we have uh, some friends from, from our ministry, from our restoration ministry are here this morning. We're having a little special thing. I want to say to you, if you're a visitor uh, uh, and you have somebody in our ministry, listen, we are planting seeds into your sons and daughters, and they are growing. It's good seed. And then, and then it goes on to say that the, the sower threw seeds on thorny ground, the people of the thorns. And what happened is the word of God tried to grow, but the thorns choked out the word. Man, that hits us where we're at, right? We get worried about the problems of life. We get worried about, the Bible says, the deceitfulness of money. And then what happens? We have thorns all around us and we don't grow. The people of the thorns, because of worrying about money and the cares of this world, you're, you're, you're not going to grow. We worry about finances. We, we worry about, about food. We worry about the things that we will eat and we will drink. Uh, verse 25, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink. Jesus is talking to people of the first century here when he's saying that. These are folks that couldn't just pop in their, you know, their chariots and go to Waltz or Jewel and, and buy groceries. You know, they, they couldn't just head to McDonald's if they were hungry. These people that Jesus were talking to, was talking to, they grew all their food. And when they were out of food, they were out of food. But Jesus says to these folks, don't worry about not having enough. I will provide for you. It's important that we see that. It's heavy. But he says the same thing to us because we are people. I'm one of them that we always worry about not having enough. Can I get an amen there? Come on. We, we, look, we look at our, uh, in the morning, we wake up in the morning and we say, I didn't get enough sleep. We look at our calendar and we say, I don't have enough time. We look at, at our bank, bank statements and we say, I don't have enough money and we spend enormous enormous amounts of time talking about and worrying about not having enough and we we're not first century we're here this morning and let's face it some of us not all of us worry about not having enough food or not having enough things to drink when our cabinets and our refrigerators are filled we worry about food we worry about clothes it's one of the other things that Jesus said. Don't worry about clothes. Now, I, I don't worry about clothes, but I certainly like clothes, right? And what, what, what do we say, right, when it comes to clothes? We say things like, does this look good on me? Does this fit right? Or some of us in the room say, oh, this outfit clashes with my shoes. 
And so then we go and we buy another outfit and another pair of shoes because we don't have enough. <laughs> or we say, does this make me look fat? I will just go right on to the next subject right now. We worry about clothes, though, don't we? We worry about the future. Ooh, that's a big one. Doesn't it feel like we just got done with an election and we have another one coming? Oh, I, now we don't make political statements in this church and we're not going to. So all I'm going to say is, doesn't matter which side of the fence you're on, it's easy to be anxious about another election coming up, right? It's just incredible. How about Y2K? Remember Y2K? How many? Yeah? All right. We worried, man. That was that thing in 1999. And everybody was worried what that four-digit computer code was going to do. Everybody knew that computer code written in four uh, numbers, the last two numbers would read zero, zero. But everybody was worried about what was it going to read, uh, uh, 1201, 2000? Was it going to read 2000, the first two numbers, or was it going to read 1900, remember? And everybody was just freaking out and, and worried about it. And, and man, I, people in this room, I know some of you, uh, they were, uh, you know, 55-gallon drums of water in our garages and uh, canned goods in our basements and matches and all kinds of stuff. And, and somebody uh, really, really, really close to me even had uh, portable potties in the basement. I mean... It's ridiculous. Sorry, Patrice. <laughs> and companies made millions on the Y2K scare. Programmers made a fortune. And at 1201, 2000, the world didn't end. Most of the stuff that we worry about in the future is never going to happen. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. It's good advice. Easier said than done. What else keeps us up at night? We worry about our kids, don't we? I do. Have you ever said this? Moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles. What kind of a world will our children have to grow up in? We worry about our health. We worry about our jobs. We worry about our church. We worry. We worry. One day, angel of death walked into a town. And a man spotted the angel of death. And he went up to talk to him. And he said, what are you doing here? And the angel of death said, well, I'm here to take 10,000 people out of the city today. And the man was all freaked out. And he said, no, no, why, why would you do that? And the angel of death said, no, you, you know, you should understand that's my job. It's my job to take people home when it's their time to go. And today, 10,000 people in the city will breathe their last breath. Well, later on in the day, many hours later, this guy finds the angel of death, and he is really angry with the angel of death. He's furious with him, and he says, you lied to me. You told me you were only going to take 10,000 people, but the reports are coming in. There's 70,000 people that have died today already in our town. You lied to me. That's 60,000 people more than you promised the angel of death said to the man, don't get mad at me. I only took 10,000 people. It was worry that killed the rest. Worry can kill you. Stress, anxiety, worry. All kinds of studies talk about the fact that all kinds of diseases and all kinds of stuff we're affected by worry. So what do we do? What, what do we do? How do we get over it? Well, listen, I, I don't have, you know, absolutes here this morning, but I'm going to give you four simple steps to help you overcome worry. It'll just take a few minutes. Four simple steps, and I want you to know I'm deep in it right with you. 
I'm applying these steps to my life every single day. The first thing that we can do to overcome worry is we need to pray. Now that seems obvious, but it's deeper than prayer. We need to pray with a different understanding if you want to overcome worry. Prayer is how Jesus handled stress. The Bible says that Jesus would go away to quiet places to pray. It says that he would go away to lonely places and pray. Who had more stress in their life than Jesus? I mean, he was born to die, and he knew that. Imagine living life knowing that you would have to go to a cross and die. You talk about stress, and then he had to take care of those annoying disciples and all those people that followed him everywhere. And he had to feed them, and he had to do all this stuff. Jesus had stress. But when we talk about prayer, Jesus is showing us, listen, this is important, that prayer lets us know we have a partner. You're not just saying words. We have a partner, God, our Father. And God is known by many names, and I love this. Our God is known by another name. Our partner is known as El Shaddai. God Almighty. He's known as El Yan Yan, God Most High. He's known, our partner is known by another beautiful name, Jehovah Jireh. You know that one. My God shall supply what? All my needs. Can I get an amen to that? And he's our partner. And you can talk to this partner about what you're going through. Now, it always seems that I get here every time I'm up here, but, so I might as well go here again. I don't know some of you. I don't know what condition you came in. Some of you are visitors. Some of us know God, this partner we're talking about. Some of us don't. Some of us are seeking. But I want, I want to make this very, very clear to you. If you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus, or if you're just seeking Yet you're here this morning, and you're worried, and you have stress, and you have anxiety. Listen, I want to say this to you. You can talk to this God. He loves you. He wants to help you. Whether you know him well or you don't, you can talk to him. The more we pray, the less we worry. What we need to do, you guys, is we need to stop wringing our hands and worry and we need to start folding our hands in prayer. Another thing we can do to overcome worry is read the Word of God. But again, it's not just dusting off that Bible off the shelf and reading a few scriptures. It's about meditating on God. What does meditate mean? It just means taking a little extra time with a scripture verse and just putting your own name in it sometimes. It just takes some time. I've been doing doing this. Listen, the Bible is better than any medication. It's better than any psychiatrist. It's better than any counselor. Now, let me say this very quickly. I am all for medication. I am all for counseling and psychiatrists and psychologists and all the rest. God provides those helpful aids when we're going through tough si seasons. Let me just say that right up front. But we need to discipline our minds. We need to learn to meditate on the Word of God. Now, I don't have time to read these scriptures, but Paul's got them on the board there or on the screen. Write these down. These are not just random scriptures. These are scripture verses that deal with worry and anxiety. I love the Psalm 94 verse. It's my favorite verse. It's the verse I have clung to through nervous breakdowns and depression and all the rest of the stuff that we go through. I love this verse. Unless the Lord had given me help, I would soon have dwelt in the silence of death. When I said, my foot is slipping, your love, O Lord, supported me. Now this says, when doubts filled my mind, but another translation says, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. Oh, friends, hold on to these verses. Meditate 
on these verses. When difficult times come, pick up your Bible. Meditate on these verses. I promise you, you will receive help and hope and peace. Thirdly, we need to learn how to release things. And we need to learn how to receive the grace of God. We, we need to learn to release. And, and, it, and it's one thing to release. It's another thing to name them out loud. You've got to do a little work here. You've got to name those things that you're anxious about. And I'm telling you, God, Jesus, will restore your soul. Let me give you an exercise. This may seem a little weird to you. But I, I've been doing it every day. You hold your hand out and with your palms down. And, and what you do is you get alone with the Lord and you just, just hold your hand out like that, just if you're alone, and then just begin to release to the Lord all the things that are bothering you. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe you're having a tough time in your marriage. Palm down and you just, just release your marriage to him. Maybe it's your job. Maybe you're worried about your job or you're worried about your company that you work, to, work, work for. Maybe you're, if you're a student here this morning, maybe it's your grades. How many of you know we get worried about our grades? Just, just hold your palm down and, and release it to the Lord. Maybe you're stressing out about being accepted. How many of you know it's, whether you're an older person or a young person, we want to be accepted. And, and sometimes we're stressed out about that. Man, I'm telling you, just, just release it to the Lord. Maybe you're, you're, you're stressed out about overcoming addictions. You, you just need to hold your, your, your hand out like this with your palm down. You're alone with God, so nobody's watching you. And just release it to you. Release anything and everything to the Lord. It's not your burden anymore. It's now in the hands of Jesus. And once you've done that, turn your palm over. Again, I, I hope it doesn't seem weird to you, but all that is, it's a symbol that, that you're, you're ready and you're willing and you have a desire to receive from the Lord. Once you've released everything, just turn your palm over and say, Lord, I, I release that to you and now I want to receive your, your healing. Some of us need healing. I want to receive forgiveness. I, I want to receive wisdom. I want to receive peace. Man, how many of us need the love of God? I want to receive the love of God. Release. Receive. Ask and be ready for the Holy Spirit to come upon you in a real way. Lastly, how do we overcome worry and anxiety? Trust. It's all about trust. You can, you can be in the, in the best message ever. You could be watching the best TV preacher. You could be in church with the best, best preacher. You could be worshiping for an hour long. But if you don't trust, you'll still be worried. It was a couple weeks ago we were at our retreat. Every year we go away as a church. And God gave me a word for, for our body on that Saturday night. And I got up and I said, look, we need to trust. I said, some of us maybe have been abused. Some of us are suffering from an illness. Some of us might be really depressed. But we need to trust. And I knew it was a word from the Lord. And, and then I sat down. And then God said, no, no. You need to trust. And so I began to pray. Those of you who were there, you know. And I, my wife and I, we, we have a daughter who is on heroin. And we haven't heard from her for two weeks now. But I, I had to say to the Lord, I trust you. I trust you. And it's hard. I, I, it's tough, but we all have things that we need to trust God in because when we, when we are on the throne of our lives, we're filled with anxiety. 
But when we trust, when we give it over to Him, then He can, he can take care of us. He can provide trust. Trust. Do I trust you, Lord? Can I be real with you this morning? Can I be honest? What are the things that I worry about? <laughs> things that keep me up at night? I worry about protecting the legacy of this wonderful church. Next month, it'll be two years that I took over as pastor. and We have a whole new set of leaders and a whole new church and a whole new season. And God's doing fantastic things. He's doing it again, isn't he? But I worry now and then. God. What, what are we going to look like three years from now, five years from now? But then I have to say, Lord, I trust you. I worry about my daughter. We don't know if she is going to live or die. But I have to say it over and over and over again. Lord, I trust you. <laughs> There's a lot of men in this room. I, if you're like me, you, you worry about these things. Can I, am I going to be a good husband? I haven't been always a good husband. Am I going to be a good father? I haven't been a good father all the time. Lord, I, I trust you. I, I, I want to I change. I want to do the best I can. I want to be the best husband. I want to be the best father. I, I trust you, Lord. I, I worry sometimes, am I being a good pastor? I'm not trained. I'm not a professional. I, I wonder, am I helping this church? I, I worry about these things now and then. But then I have to say, Lord, I trust you. All I can do is do the best I can. I trust you. Dan, if you are like me and you have an area in your life that is really, really bothering you, maybe there's something in your life that is overwhelming you and you need a special touch this morning. There's something going on that is causing you great worry and great anxiety. I, I know I'm with friends here this morning. I know I'm not alone. The team is going to play a song. And, and, and maybe you need to come out from where you are and come up here and have somebody pray for you. Again, there's no pressure, no big deal. But sometimes it's not enough. I, I, I know I'm almost contradicting myself, but let me finish it. It's not enough to say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Sometimes you need somebody to just pray with you. you. You with me this morning? It's not that you don't trust or can't trust. Sometimes it helps to just have somebody pray with you, pray for you. And so as the band does this song, we're going to have some people up here. Don't be afraid. Take a step. Come forward. And let somebody pray with you about that thing that you're worried about, that thing that you're having trouble trusting God with. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this church. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. And thank you that you take care of us. And Lord, there's nothing too big for you. But sometimes we just got to grab onto you. Oh Lord, we need you every hour. But you are our rock. You are our solid rock. I pray for this church right now. I pray for some here this morning that are going through tough times. I pray that you'd help them. Be with them. Whether they come up for prayer or they don't. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. You're going to get us through. In Jesus' name we pray.